say if router one wanted to try and tell net to router two and access that we'd have to set up some accounts on router two on router two if i say quit from here i'll say under the user actually let's look at triple a and let's display this to see what's there this We've got a local user admin, a password of admin. That's already there, so that's excellent. We'll use that account and we will say local user admin service type is Talnet. And under the user interface, now they're going to be coming down on the V. VTY links, so VTY 0 and 4, we say the authentication mode is triple A, and we're going to use the protocol inbound of Talnet. I think that should work, so let's try that. So let's say Talnet 10.1.12.2, we use the username of admin, password of admin, and we're in. So we're in R2 here. If someone was logged into R2 and you wanted to kick them off, someone's got in, they shouldn't be able to get in. You need to actually use it. You can say kill. First, let's display what users are on our link. So display users. And we see that the users, this plus means the current user, what they're using. Obviously, they're coming in through VTY. They're using Talnet. This is their, the address of the remote end, 10.1.12.1, and they've got in via a password as authentication. But we don't want them in, and the username is admin. So that's how they got in. Um, so we're going to say kill user interface VTY0. Now, you see that this user is still logged in here. When we kill the interface, we kick them off. So you see that the connection was closed by the remote host. If there's anyone ever ever on your router unauthorized or you don't want them or you need it for something else, you can kick them off of the actual router. Another way that people actually access as opposed to Telnet is via SSH. So let's set up our SSH. And on the remote end, we say system view, which is R2. We're going to say RSA local key pair to create our SSH keys. Um, the standard is 1024. They're the standard keys that are used in the industry. And this generates our SSH keys. We probably can even display our SSH keys that are being used. So if we say display RSA local key pair and probably public yeah these are the SSH keys that have been created so we've created our SSH key we're also going to have to under the user interface VTY this is the lines that will be coming in if I say display this Display this. We'll say protocol inbound as SSH. We probably want to create another user just to have a look. So I'll create another one. So I'll say local user will be called student2. They'll be using a password cipher of Huawei. They'll have a privilege level of 13. They'll be using a service type of SSH. So let's make the admin user a privilege level of 15. 
Let me display this configuration. Display this. I've got the admin user only can come in through Telnet. So let me change that as well. I'll make the admin user service type get in through either terminal or SSH or Telnet. I'll save that config. Yes, I'm sure. That config is saved. I've done, I've created the RSA keys. I've created a user under triple A. I'm going to enable the secure Telnet. So SSH is basically secure Telnet. So we say S Telnet server enable. And let's see if we could get in now. So system view. So we S Telnet to 10.1.12.2. We use the username of admin. Okay. So here we're going to say SSH client first time enable. And as it says, please run the command SSH client first time to enable to enable the first time access function and try again. So we'll do that again. S Telnet. We're going to try and get it through admin. The server is not authenticated. Continue to access it. Yes. Save the service public key. Yes. The connection was closed by the remote host. Hmm. I'm not sure why that is. This is where I'll use a um, debug. So if I say terminal debugging, and I'm going to debug SSH server or okay, SSH server VTY or. Just coming through VTY zero. Oh, there we go. Now let me run this command again. S Telnet ten dot one. And I put in admin. Let's see what the debug is actually saying when I add admin. So we've got the SSH log user does not exist. The user admin does not exist. So let's create that. I thought that was what was being created when I, okay. So if I say system view, <coughs> SSH user admin, enter, try again. Admin. Okay, this time it connected. For this again there's a few good commands that have come up here so I see that so it's been the authorization has been initiated so that's better than we had last time so the SSH user admins authentication type is none so use SSH username authentication type so this is what I like about the Huawei. It tells you exactly the command you need to enter if you know what you're looking for. Also, no authentication type is configured for the user admin. <coughs> so if I say SSH, SSH user admin, authentication type, let's say password. Telnet admin enter the password of admin 
Fail to connect to the server. Please check whether the else. Well, we know that we've enabled the S Telnet service. So again, go back to the debug. SSH username service type S Telnet. So this should be the last command. SSH user admin service type S Telnet. Enter. Admin. And we type in admin here. We're into the system. And let's see what the debug was saying. The aut it said something about the authentication succeeded there. The AAA, the AA triple A authentication of user admin succeeded. Brilliant. I'm going to quit out of that and see if I can access it via student two. So I say student. Okay, need to go through the same process again. So I say SSH user student two student two authentic authentication type password and SSH Service type S Talnet. So we say student two. Password is Huawei. And we're in. Brilliant. This is how we actually access via Talnet and SSH. And again, if we wanted to display the users and how they, so we say display users. We can see now that the user has come in via the VTY line. They've accessed the terminal via SSH. This is the um, host name. They've used the password and their username is student2. So we're on via student2 at the moment. If we want to see the privilege level that they've got, we'd probably say something like display user interface okay display user interface vty0 and we can see that vty0 is on they've got through via vty they're authenticated via triple a and their actual privilege level is 13 so if i go on to if I enter and I say something like display IP interface brief, we can see that we could use this command. If I wanted to restrict this actual user from using this command, what I could do, I could say command privilege level 14. And why would I say 14? I'm just making it one privilege level higher than the privilege level that this user has accessed. They can access any from any privilege level commands from 0 to 13 if i make it higher than 13 they shouldn't theoretically be able to access that command if i say command privilege level 14 view system and then i'd say display ip interface brief now if i go back onto r1 and i run that same command display ip interface brief we see that that is no longer accessible. So this is how we can restrict um, users from accessing certain commands. I wonder if I could change it back again. If I now try to change that back to 13, oh, that's an error. I think I know why that is. But if I do triple A, I say um, display this, Right. If I say quit, I'll just say return to go all the way out. And I say quit, and I log. Mm. I'm going to try and log back in with the admin. So user interface con 
Zero. Let me just do something as a backup. And sometimes I use putty as well. If you want to use putty, you you look on your ENS, you look at your settings, you go to your server, you see the server's IP is this, 127.0.0.1. I know that it's port 2000 it uses, and I will tell it to 127.0.0.1, and I'm on server one, sorry, I'm on router one. So I'll change this in putty behavior, put it Huawei R1. So you get R1, press enter. And the reason I wanted to show you this, I kind of forgot the reason I put this in now. The reason I wanted to show you this, oh yeah, so that I've got access to R2. So if this now, what I'm going to do, logs me out, at least I've still got access to R2 remotely. Authentication mode, triple A, and log out. Before I do that, let me make sure I've got access. Triple A. Display this. The admin has access via the terminal. That's the main thing I need. Control Z. Say quit. Admin. Admin. Say system view. Now see if I could do this command. Privilege. Level. 13 view system display ID interface brief. Now it allows me to do that. And the reason why is because the user has to be at um, a privileged level of 15 to be able to add in certain commands. So now on R2, if I say display IP interface brief, and now I've got the display IP interface brief back. This was just a brief overview of some system management commands on the Huawei. We've had a look at changing the clock, how to access the system, how to add an IP interface, some system user commands and some access controls, how to do some restriction for access. We've looked at Telnet and we've looked at SSH. I hope you've enjoyed and thanks for watching.